Hello everyone, welcome to English Tutorials. Today we are going to read and analyze The Owl, a beautiful war poem written by British poet Edward Thomas. But before beginning our main discussion, I would like to request you all to like the content if you find it helpful and if possible, please subscribe to motivate and support. But at first, let's learn a few facts about our author. Philip Edward Thomas was born in the year 1878, 3rd March, and he passed away in the year 1979, 9th April. He was a British poet, essayist, and a novelist. He is considered a war poet, although few of his poems deal directly with his own war experiences. And his career in poetry only came after he had already been a successful writer and literary critic. In 1915, he enlisted in the British Army to fight in the First World War and was killed in action during the Battle of Arras in 1917, soon after he arrived in France. Though Edward Thomas was a war poet, but unlike Sassoon or Wilfred Owen, his poems do not give us direct, crude descriptions of warfare, but his poems deal with war in a very subtle way by hinting at the meaninglessness or the futility. The Owl by Edward Thomas Downhill I came hungry and yet not starved. Cold, yet had heat within me that was proof against the north wind. Tired, yet so that rest had seemed the sweetest thing under a roof. In the very first line, the poet tells us that he was coming downhill in a night that was a chilly night rather and he was feeling very much hungry. Though, at the same time, he also informed us that he was not feeling fasting or starved. This means that he was not completely without food, which he perhaps had a time ago. He is saying that he was feeling cold as the night was chilly in the hills. Yet the food that he enjoyed a while ago was providing him enough heat that shielded him against the bitter north wind that cut the flesh like a knife. Physically, he was exhausted. Therefore, a warm and cozy rest under some sort of roof seemed to him the sweetest thing at that moment. The first stanza therefore clearly tells us the physical and mental state of the poet in that night. We came to know that he was in a miserable condition due to hunger, cold and exhaustion as he was coming downhill. Now let's begin the second stanza of the poem. Then at the inn I had food, fire and rest knowing how hungry, cold and tired was I. All of the night was quite barred out, except an owl's cry, a most melancholy cry. Then like a boon, he found all that he was seeking desperately in an inn, food, warmth and rest, which made him realize in what extent he was hungry, cold and tired. But as he was enjoying his privileges in that solitary and silent night, an owl's shriek came to him through the protection of the walls of the inn. The walls of his cozy shelter became ineffective to stop the call of the owl to penetrate. The poet considers the cry as the most melancholy cry. Shaken out long and clear upon the hill, no merry note nor cause of merriment. But one telling me plain what I escaped and others could not. That night as in I went. In this stanza, the first two lines actually describe the owl's shriek call. The poet is saying that in that silent mountain region, the call echoed for a long time and was clearly heard. The cry had no note of joy and elation and the poet says that there was no cause of joy and happiness either. As the owl clearly and most poignantly reminded the poet that not everyone was as lucky or fortunate enough to evade the sufferings like him as he went into that particular inn to enjoy food, warmth and rest. This stanza for me is the most significant one. The owl here is perhaps the messenger of humanity. The call speaks for all the deprived and suffered. It is like a wake up call for all of us who only think about our own very own personal gain or comfort ignoring the need of mankind in general. On another level, the owl's cry symbolically means the call of the realization of one's inner self, the conscience. In the present world, mankind has forgotten all about social equality in terms of basic needs of living. They have become too selfish. Therefore, the call perhaps is a reminder that we need to stop being selfish and to think about all. And now we come to the fourth and the last stanza of this very beautiful poem. And salted was my food and my repose, salted and sobered too by the bird's voice, speaking for all who lay under the stars, soldiers and poor, 
unable to rejoice. The bird's voice, the melancholy cry, the somber, gloomy voice salted his food and comfort by realizing him the overall suffering looming large. His food became tasteless, his rest and comfort became meaningless, his personal gain became insignificant to him by that voice. The bird's voice spoke for the soldiers and the people, the unfortunate lot who still lay under the open sky in the chill. The soldiers and the poor who could not enjoy the food and warmth as they had no means to enjoy that. Interestingly, it is the last line that refers to the war by mentioning the soldier who are bound by duty to suffer in that chill of the night. Thus, Thomas's poem, though deals with war, it does not deal with crude descriptions of warfare, but by subtly hinting at the meaninglessness and the futility of warfare. In the end, I hope you all enjoyed the poem like I did in explaining it. If you think it can help you, then please like and share the content. Please try to give feedback and if possible, please subscribe to motivate and support. Thank you for watching.